you, Jesus. We exalt your holy name, God. Come on, let's give him the highest praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We exalt you, Lord. We exalt you, Jesus. Bless the Lord on my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. We bless you, Lord. We magnify 
Hallelujah. You are a promise keeper. Thank you, Lord. All your promises are yes and amen. And we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, God, you are so good. You are so faithful. You are so kind. Oh, God, you are so good. Yes, you are. You are here, moving in our midst. And I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You're working in this place. And I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You're breaking every chain. And I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You're working in this place. And I worship you. And I worship you. Yes, we call you. We make a miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God.
walking in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are a way maker, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. Love him, love him, love him, love him. Thank you, Lord. He is a way maker. He's a miracle worker. Hallelujah. God, we honor you. We celebrate you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Now, Father, I address you as the kind Father because you are kind. You are a good God. You've been so amazingly good to us. And so, Father, right now, I want to thank you. First things first. Thank you for being so good. Thank you for being so merciful. Thank you, Lord, for another shot, another chance, even after we blew some chances. Thank you, Lord, for getting us back on track. And God, I want to thank you, Lord, because you did make ways out of no ways, God. You did deliver us, God. You did take us in. You did bless us. Come on, anybody in here grateful? So, Father, we want to tell you thank you for that right now. And God, as we prepare to go into this word, God, I ask you in Jesus' name, God, to allow the word to illuminate to your people, God. I believe I'm preaching out what you want preached out this morning, fulfilling our assignment. And so, Father, Lord, let the, the word permeate our ideas and thoughts and let it, God, get down in the inside. God, and transform us from the inside out is our prayer, God. Now, Father, we've already dressed up this morning, but we do it again. Our feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Our loins are girded about with truth. We have on the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, the helmet of salvation. We have love and our faith does work by love. We got keys to the kingdom. Go ahead and tell that devil where to go. Satan, we bind you every tactic, every strategy in the name of Jesus. Come on, take authority over yourself. You will not distract me today. My mind is stayed on Christ. I let this mind be in me, which is also in Christ Jesus. And he keeps me in perfect peace. So, Father, we thank you right now for the victory. Today, God, I sense a spirit of just freedom in this place. I do. So, Father, I thank you for it already in advance of the word. I thank you, Lord. He who the sun sets free is free indeed. We give you glory, honor, and praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, come on, clap your hands, give them glory. Tell them thank you. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody add the shout to it. Add the shout. Amen. While I'm still standing, I do honor my sweet wife. I thank God for her. Amen. How about these visitors in the house? God bless you. Good to have you. Amen. All over the room. God bless you. Thank you for coming today. You may be seated. I don't know when I have been more excited about preaching something. I don't. I, I am excited about this word today, and uh, I'm just going to do my job if you'll, if you'll allow me. Are you praying with me? Amen. And I just want to do my assignment as a pastor and teacher this morning. And uh, so today we're going to talk from this thought right here, and this is going to be a strong, strong blessing to those of you who want to fulfill the will of God for your life. I want to talk about three P's, purpose, plans, and pursuits. Purpose, plans, and pursuits, if that's okay. 
And in the midst of this, we're also going to deal with some pragmatic themes on how to get freed up, how to be delivered. Amen? Uh, because did you know that all of us at different facets and phases need an element of deliverance in our life? Is that not right? And we'll articulate that a little bit more in just a minute. But purpose, plans, and pursuits. Will you say that with me? Come on. Purpose, plans, and pursuits. Will you say it again, please? Purpose, plans, and pursuits. Once you go to Genesis chapter 5, verse number 1. Genesis chapter 5, verse number 1 and 2. And uh, let's just mind this thing out today. Uh, I want you to see it. I want you to hear it. New King James Version says it so well. Genesis chapter 5, verse number 1 through 2. And the Bible says, this is the book of the genealogy of Adam. In the day that God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. This is the book of the family of Adam. And in the day that God created man, somebody say, that's us. In the day that God created man, he made him, lowercase h, in the likeness of God. He made him to be like himself. Did y'all get that? When God created man, He made man in the likeness. To be made in the likeness is to made to be like, to be like himself. And he created them male and female. How many sexes did he create? Two. Two. Okay, just one check. He made male and female. Any other categories? I just saw male and female. Just in case somebody was confused. That's all he made. Now, man made others. But God created. No, you got to do it with my hand. Male and female. Come on, do it again. Come on. Male and female. That's, that's all he created. All right, get back to my lesson. He made them male and female, and he blessed them and called them mankind in the day that he purposed them, in the day that he created him. I want to ask you a question at the beginning of this message, and that is, are you living out, are you becoming the blessed man or woman that God created? I want to ask you another question. Are you becoming the individual that God purposed you to be? Because the Bible says he created you, male and female, but he blessed you. That is, he blessed mankind. He created you. He blessed human beings, verse number one, and he made you to be like himself. Is that not right? God created you to operate in the same image that he operated in. God spoke, said, let there be. He told you to speak. Is that not right? We speak those things that be not as they they were. Is that not right? He told us that the power of death and life is in the tongue. God had authority. He told you, I give you authority. He created you to act like him. Let's move through this thing in the framework of the Spirit of God. Ephesians 5 and 1 in the Amplified. Come on, family, move fast with me. Ephesians 5 and 1 in the Amplified. Because God says, I didn't just create you, but I created you a certain type of way. Amen. I've given you a certain type of abilities. I've given you a certain type of wherewithals and know-hows to carry out, know-hows rather, to carry out. Therefore, become imitators of God. Does that sound like his likeness? Copy him. I'm asking you today, are you copying? Are you becoming the image of God? Are you becoming who he created you to be? Become imitators of God, copy him, follow his examples as well-beloved children do what? Imitate their father. Is anybody getting this revelation? Are you becoming the individual that God saw? When God made you, he made some distinct purpose for your life with plans to get you there, 
and awesome pursuits that you had to be willing to undertake in order to fulfill your purpose. So what is this concept, Pastor, of purpose, plans, and pursuit? Well, purpose, what God called you to do. Purpose. Easy enough? What God called you to do, his mission for your life. When he set you aside from your mother's womb, what God called you to do, he put a purpose on your life, but then plans his methods for getting you there. There are some plans that God has for your life, methods to get you there, all right? You have a purpose, but God has some plans to get you. David, your ultimate purpose is to be king, but there are some plans that are going to get you there. Are y'all getting this? You're going to clean up sheep's mess for a season. You're going to be out in Jesse's field working, and they're going to overlook you. Anybody ever been overlooked? Amen. They're going to overlook you, but that's okay. I got some plans to get you there. Is that all right? You're going to play spirits off of Saul at a point in your life. You're going to destroy Goliath. Are you getting this? There are some plans, distinct plans to get you there. But all along, I was bringing you to your ultimate purpose, and that is the fulfillment of your kingship. David, Joseph, rather, you got a purpose. Ultimately, you're going to be the prime minister of, of Egypt, but you're going to go through some peas before you get there. The pit, the prison, the palace. Come on, somebody. How many of y'all know sometimes you got to endure the peas? Is that all right? You go through the Potiphar's house. You deal with those four P's of life, but ultimately you end up in the ultimate P, which is the palace. Your purpose, what I called you to do. Those are the plans. Those are the things that God prearranged, Ephesians 2 and 10, for you to walk in before you were ever born. God has some purpose. He has some plans. But then pursuits what you do in response to the call. Y'all, I'm telling you, so much of what we teach, even in this ministry, it has very little to do with uh, whether or not God wants to see wonderful things happen in your life, his plans in your life. All of those things are accurate, they're true, they're inherent in Scripture. But so much of what we teach and preach in this discipleship church is about people finally implementing and activating the plan of God for their life. Somebody say, I got to do something. Yeah, pursuits. What are you pursuing? Have you wasted a half a year pursuing something that God has not called you to do? Y'all realize we are in July, and that is the end of July. And I'm telling you, pretty soon it's going to be beginning to look a lot like Christmas. This year is going to close. I'm telling you, as soon as that breezy air starts coming in, and September-ish, October, you know the seasons have changed. I don't know about you, but that's when I pinch myself and say, have I done this year what God called me to? Have I pursued the plan of God for my life? Is KCC doing what God called it to do as a ministry? Are we in the will of God or am I behind schedule? And let me tell you something, when you are behind schedule, you got to become more active about pursuing more urgent about pursuing. You don't have time to listen to godly counsel six months later. It's quiet, but I'm going to work this morning. Purpose, plans, and what? Pursuits. So in order to get these three things activated in our life, we have to be delivered from ourselves. This is going to be some good stuff today. Ultimately, at a certain point, you're going to have to be delivered from yourself, or as my big brother in the Lord coined it, uh, breaking up with your brain. Amen. Anybody getting this? You're going to have to get rid of your own insights and wisdom about your life and what you think should be or should not be, and finally say, Father, not my will, but thine be done. Not what I want, not what I feel, not how I see it, but how you see it. My wife has a saying she came up with. She said, dear, I learned long ago that God was right, and it is in my best interest to adhere to what God said. Right. It's so good, because when you're young, how many of you know young thinks it's forever? Yeah, right. Is that all right? <laughs> young thinks, I see these young men on the front row, when you're 20-something and 30-something, young starts to thinking that, man, I got time. It'll be all right. You know, I'll fulfill it in a minute. Y'all, when you know that your next big milestone is 50 yeah. <laughs> and 60, yeah. and then as my old church used to say, you in the 65 plus club, 
We had a ministry called the 65 Plus Club. Amen. When you start getting in the pace setters ministry, y'all see where I'm coming from? You, you know without a shadow of a doubt, baby, I, I, I about need to be about my father's. That I got to go ahead and get urgent. I don't have time to be distracted. I don't have time to be hooked on a pornographic vice. I don't have time to be distracted by the sins of this world. I don't have time to be distracted by the government. I got to get in my purpose in God, and whatever it takes, doggone it, that's what I'm going to do. Therefore, I must be what, church? Delivered from myself. God, this is good teaching. Some people are at the wrong church this morning. You know why? They hadn't got delivered from themselves. They still got to go to the church where grandma laid the first brick. They still got to go to the church because they like the hot chocolate in the vestibule. They're still at the wrong church because, after all, the kids love the youth ministry. But are the kids leading you? Or are you leading... The kids, are you giving them the lollipop without the shot? Are y'all getting this revelation? Purpose, plans, and pursuits. Let me walk through this. Somebody say, I got to get delivered. Now, before you all say, yeah, that's good for those people who are hooked, you know, on adultery or pornography or some other immoral vice, they pass, preach, pastor, they, they need to del- be delivered. Yeah, you know, th- those are the easy ones. The folk who, who are racist, yeah, of course, they need to be what? Delivered, You know, the people who have some problems with, with a cussing tongue, all that kind of good stuff. How many of y'all know those people need to be delivered? Can I make a newsflash announcement? Everybody in this room, including yours truly, has an element of deliverance that you are yet walking through. And I'm going to tell you, you need to be delivered. Come on, walk through and let me, let me see if I can paint a picture. How, how might you need to be delivered? Well, you might be a fundamentalist. You may have grew up in Christian all your life, love God, all those kinds of things, but you don't believe in the Holy Ghost. You don't believe in the Holy Ghost. Well, you believe in the Holy Ghost as it pertains to Acts 4 and 31, that we speak with boldness when the Holy Ghost comes, but don't worry about all that tongue stuff. Why not worry about the tongue stuff? After all, the Bible says in Acts 2 and 38 that it would be a gift. Well, guess what you need to be? Delivered. You need to be delivered from a fundamentalist doctrine and ideology that has boxed God in so he can't flow in your life the way he wants to. And if the Holy Ghost wasn't necessary, he wouldn't have told us, Acts 1 and 9, that we would receive power after the Holy Ghost came. If the Holy Ghost wasn't necessary, he wouldn't have given us the nine gifts of the Spirit. Yes, you love the nine fruit of the Spirit. And you know why you love that? Because fundamentally, people can understand kindness, gentleness, patience, all those wonderful fruit, love, of joy of the Spirit. But when we start pressing in on, but what about when God wants to get you some prophetic information through a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom? Do you discount that element of the Holy Writ? And if you discount that, guess what you need? You need deliverance. I'll do that part, but I won't do that part. Isn't it amazing how we buffet the scripture? Is that all right? Paul said, Satan came to buffet me. And some of y'all think that means Satan came to give me the option of buffets. I could pick whatever I want, go with that part, but I don't have to go with that part. Everybody say not so. No, you might need to be delivered. If you can't listen to a woman preach, this is some good stuff. You might need some deliverance because God can use that lady to bless you in your life and propel you to the next wave and move of God. My God, Catherine Kuhlman and all these mighty women of God down through the years who were spirit-filled that the Lord used. Are you kidding me? You might need to be delivered. Is that all right? Sometimes people need some what? They need some deliverance. Pastor, get back on point, right? Because the truth is, y'all, you might need to be delivered because guess what? You just don't listen to anybody. (laughs) And the Bible said there is safety in the multitude of counselors, and, and you don't listen to two instructions per year. 
Well, if that's the case, guess what you need? Deliverance. And you need deliverance because not listening can hurt your life. In fact, let's go a little bit further. Not listening can kill you. Not just hurt. I said not listening can kill. Can I be compassionate yet very honest? Some of the people that you've seen lay across some altars as stiff as a board, it didn't have anything to do with God wanting them to not be here, but it was their Ecclesiastes chapter 7. They died before their time because of wickedness and foolishness. Good God, you're preaching, Gabe. They just didn't. Listen, the great R.W. Shambach prophesied to a young man in his service one day and told him he needed to make a change. He needed to make a move. Tonight was the night. He needed to move right now. You don't have time. You need to come to Jesus. It is going to spare your very life. God wouldn't let him close the service. He had to walk back to the back of that auditorium and minister to that young man up close and in person. The young man still would not come. He said, are you sure you won't come? He said, not tonight. I will not come. By the end of that week, that young man's body Body was consumed by the grill of a Mack truck. He was in a motorcycle accident, torn beyond viewing. So sometimes not listening can destroy you. I know for a fact, had he adhered to that altar call, he would have still been here. Boy, you're preaching, Gabe Rossi. Because the truth is, you are going to be delivered. You're going to be delivered one way or another. But you are going. All of you in here who resist deliverance, you're being delivered right now. You go in one place or the other. You're going to be delivered into heaven or you're going to be delivered into hell. You are going, baby, to be delivered. Preach Gabe Rogers. I just want to be delivered into the right place. Some of y'all didn't agree with that, so let me see if I can't prove my point. I'm telling you, you're going to be delivered. Colossians 1 and 13. Can I prove my point about how you are imminently, New King James Version, going to be delivered? Everybody say good deliverance. Yeah, I like good deliverance. The Bible says in Colossians 1 13, he has delivered us from the power of darkness. Do y'all see that? Jesus has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us or translated us or moved us into the kingdom of his dear son, Jesus Christ. Everybody in here that's been born again, been saved, give Jesus great praise because God has delivered you. Thank you, Lord, for your deliverance. I've been translated. So now my kingdoms are not of this world. Philippians 3 and 20, my citizenship is in heaven. I have been delivered. You can pick that deliverance. Amen. Or you can pick another form of deliverance. 1 Corinthians 5 and 5. Y'all know I studied my Bible, right? No, you're going to be delivered. You will be delivered. Amen. It's going to happen one way or another. It's just important to be delivered whose way? God's way. Y'all, I want the plan of God for my life. I don't want to waste my life. I don't want to ruin my life. I don't want to go through pain and travail. The Bible says the way of the transgressor is hard. Anybody get that? But the path of the just is as a shining light that grows brighter and brighter until the perfect day. Anybody besides me want that bright path? Yo, I like living a good life. John 10, 10 through 11. Jesus came that I might have life and have it how? More abundantly. If you don't want your abundance, send it to me. I like living the abundant life. I don't like being underneath. I'm the head and not the tail. Hallelujah. But you are going to be delivered one way or another. This was a young man who would not turn from his sins. He would not stop. He would not refrain from the evil that he was doing. This young man was in the church. Paul is preaching to the church at Corinth. This is not some young man out in the world. He is in the church, living debaucherous living. If you don't know the history of this text, this young man is literally sleeping with his father's wife, which would be his stepmom. He's getting with his father's wife, 
And Paul finally writes to this church and says, I tell you how to deal with this young man. Deliver him to Satan for the destruction of his flesh that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Did he get delivered? I didn't say he went to hell. I said he got he got delivered. Amen. No, some stuff had to happen in his life. Do you understand what the destruction of his flesh means? Can I break that down in the Greek? The destruction of the flesh. Say it with an intentional face for all of you note takers. His flesh was destroyed. What are some ways your flesh can be destroyed? Disease. Making wrong decisions. What are some ways your flesh can be destroyed? Accidents and incidents. Wrong decisions. All right? Was he the liver? Now, here's a metaphor for the day. I want you to understand this. When God packaged you in heaven, he said in Jeremiah 1 and 5, before I formed you, I knew you. God packaged you, Galatians chapter 1. He said the same thing about Paul. Before I separated you from your mother's womb, God did what? He package you. That's why I'm a pro-life preacher, because babies are already babies before they ever get in the human anatomy. God packaged them in heaven. Y'all seeing that? Futures past. God packaged them. Before I ever formed you, I knew you. I knew you up there before I ever put you in here. So as I got as as much as a human being as Gabe Rogers in his mid-40s. I formed you back then. Are y'all getting this? Right? But stay with my point. Before God packaged you, or when God packaged you, like a UPS FedEx package, he put a label on you. Now, he labeled you to be something. Well, this is a good teacher. He called you something. All right? He FedExed you to planet Earth, to Charlotte, North Carolina, Middletown, Connecticut, Bronx, New York, wherever you're from, God packaged you to go into that area and make impact. He packaged you to do that. He knew that when you got there, some people would have to unpack you, take all the styrofoam out. Come on, rip all the plastic away. How many of y'all know we got to get some shaping? But he sent you with an assembly instruction called the Word of God. Now, as long as you read that word, you know how to in- assemble the product by which That's was packaged. Right. Yeah. God sent the instructions, and so if I live my life off of these instructions, I will be assembled and become who God called me to be. But now, you will be delivered. Here's the problem. Take your seat. Some people, when they left the distribution center and the shipment center, they got derailed and off track by by some other cities and places that God didn't tell them to stop at. Are y'all getting this revelation? Now you in Okinawa, Kentucky, instead of Charlotte, North Carolina, where you belong because you pause somewhere where God never told you to pause. What's your point, Pastor? Stop pausing with the wrong boyfriend. Come on, somebody. Stop pausing with illicit drugs. Come on. Stop pausing with the wrong mindset. Stop pausing with not believing the Bible. Cover to cover. Stop pausing with not going to the right church. You're not working the right system. So your package is not being delivered. Take your seat. You can go to this church. I'm about to throw you all a curveball you're not ready to hit. You can sit in this church all your life with all of these rich systems of discipleship, all of this good gospel teaching and preaching, men and women's fellowship this afternoon, cafe buildings, life groups to help you get off of pornography. The list goes on and on and on and on. You can sit on a pew in this church all your life, and because you never pursue everything that is spoken, will never be manifested in your life. It's manifested in the life of everybody around you. You get to see your peers go up. Boy, that's disappointing. All of your peers scoring touchdowns, breaking through. Come on, somebody. Closing on houses, getting married, getting born, getting this. That's happening. They moving up, up, up. 
You came in in the same class, but somebody listened and did while somebody heard and ignored. Hallelujah. And so in a minute, you get demoted. But you are going to be delivered. <laughs> Good is some good teaching. No, you're going to be delivered. God is not okay with people who are not producing an ROI. I want y'all to know that. You look at your pastor superstars out there and you say, ooh, go preach. I love him. He's a great preacher. I love her. She's a great preacher. Your nationally renowned people that you so enjoy listening to on the podcast and all those wonderful things you take in. Y'all, you better stop living vicariously through those people and understand that God had a mission for your life. Come on. You better at a certain point say, I need to pursue because I am going to be delivered. I'm going somewhere. And I used to think that people in the kingdom of God, that is, Stephanie, people who got born again. Let me tell you what I used to think. Nicole, I used to think that, you know, you can ignore parts of the Bible. For example, the Holy Ghost. You don't have to believe in the spirit of God. As long as you get saved, saved in faith, believe in Jesus, You can live out the rest of your days and just seamlessly go to heaven. You'll just miss out on a few benefits in this world, but you'll seamlessly go to heaven. I used to think that, but I'm here to bring you a little bit deeper. That is not how the kingdom of God works. In Matthew 25, the guy with the one talent, the guy with the two talent, the guy with the five talent, they were all metaphorically in the kingdom. All of them. All of them. All of them. Five, two, one. All of them were in the, all of them had an altar experience where they met Jesus. However, when the master left Genera, the one with the one, the one with the two, the one with the five, and he came back later on, Marion, to reckon his account, all of them worked for God. All of them worked for the master, but not all of them got a paycheck. The one who was fruitless with the one talent, who did nothing with what God told him to do except go and bury it, God said to him, depart from y'all. He did not make it. Will you please reconcile that scripture with all of you people who think you're going to sit down on what God called you to do and never pursue his plan for your life and still get free entry into the kingdom? I want you to help me reconcile that to all my seeker-friendly Christians out there who have no agenda for fulfilling God's plan for their life, but you sit in somebody's church week in and week out with no kingdom effect. You are what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, good for nothing. And I'm telling you, there is nothing in heaven that is good for nothing. There's nothing that's going to be in the millennial reign that is good for nothing. You know what I'm preaching for right now? I'm preaching for my rewards, baby. I'm hoping that when we get there, I can be ruling over something like Billy Graham and Lester Summerall. I'm hoping when we get there that God will count me worthy. Tell your neighbor, you better get to work. I know y'all think you're going to coast. And can I give you another revelation on how you won't stay the same? By being in Lodabar, y'all, the world is too wicked. So you're going to be influenced by one or the other. What are are you preaching this morning, Pastor Gabe? How to not backslide? That's the bottom line. That's really what this message is. Y'all, if you got like a half a foot in church, a half a foot with Jesus, you're going to backslide because the world is too evil. Matthew 24 and 12, the Spirit of God just dropped it down in me. I believe he wants us to read that. Will you all put that on the screen, please? It's nowhere in my notes, but God wants you to know this. Because lawlessness will abound, the love of God will do what? Grow cold. Y'all, lawlessness is abounding. You know what that means? Lawlessness is winning over some people. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Well, that means, Linda, we wrestle. And if you're wrestling, somebody can prevail. In fact, somebody's going to prevail. Either you're going to prevail 
or what you're wrestling with is going. So, y'all, what am I saying? We got to get serious about our Christian orientation, about the Spirit of God resting on us, and about us fulfilling God's plan for our life. Plans, purposes, and pursuits. Everybody say, what are you doing? This is so important that you get this revelation. Man, I I had prayed for years, and any of you who know anything about being a a minister of the gospel, God doesn't always give you every revelation at the same time. No, you're going to have to pray some stuff out, and then you're going to pray it out, and you're going to have to wait, and then you don't preach it until he gives it to you. You got to wait until he talks to you. So I've been praying for years because I didn't just want a haphazard explanation. I knew it meant something very significant, but in these last days, God finally brought down the mallet on what Matthew 22 means. You all have been quoting it for years, but he said, many are called, but few are chosen. Well, what is that? Many, y'all, we got to reconcile this. We cannot read these scriptures that clearly indicate that some people were left out while other people got in. Now, the hyper-grace people will tell you it don't matter what you do, how long you stay in it, you're going to be just fine. That's just not biblical. I love it. It's charismatic. I don't love it, actually. It's charismatic. It's very attractive. It's just not scriptural. Romans 6.15 says, should I continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. So that must mean that there is a run out. That must mean there is a deadline. Yes, his mercy endureth how long? Forever. But if you don't take advantage of the forever enduring mercy, you can be left out of the mercies of God. Are y'all getting this revelation? If I take a razor blade and I cut my thumb, all right, did God cause that pain? Was God's mercies enduring? He is a merciful God. But who cut themselves? You did that, Proverbs 26 and 2, the curse doesn't come without cause. God, this is good teaching, y'all. You're going to have to go back and get this tape. It's too much revelation for me to slow down. I I really need you to get it. I only got about 12 more minutes. But y'all, for many are called, but few are. You mean to tell me God did invite all these people, but not everybody? God brought in? Somebody should say, why? Let's read it. Matthew 22, and let's start at verse number 8. Is this blessing anybody? I'm going to amplify for clarity of reading. Then he said to his servants, the wedding feast is ready. But those who were invited were? Ah. Everybody was called, but some people were not worthy. (laughs) Many are called, Pam, but few are so that's enough to prove my revelation, but can we go a little bit further? Because we need to see why they weren't worthy. Why they, I know whosoever will, let them come. The great Billy Graham said it this way. So many Christians fall prey to what we call easy believism. You know what easy believism is? A Christian faith that you don't have to walk out. That you don't have to live day by day. Easy believism. No requirements. No plans, no pursuits, no purpose. You can just, whosoever will, let them come and stay the way you are. Never develop, never get better. Easy believism, but that's not what Scripture says. The Scripture says these people who were invited were not worthy. Well, why weren't they worthy? What threw them out of the runnings? Paul said, I run this race so that I don't become disqualified. What disqualifies people besides marijuana? I mean, what disqualifies people? False starts. What disqualifies people? Enhancing drugs. What disqualifies people? Character moments. 
I'll never forget the Super Bowl years ago. I was there, as a matter of fact. Young man scheduled to play in the Super Bowl the next day. We all get this revelation. He's supposed to play. His team made it to the Super Bowl. But the night before the Super Bowl was to be played, he went on out there in the streets of that city and got into some foolishness right before the biggest game of his life and could not play the next day in the Super Bowl. He was no longer worthy. Christians better start thinking the same way. What puts you out of the game? What puts you out of the runnings? In fact, what will get you put off the team? Can I give you a simple answer before we keep reading? A lack of temperament. That's how you get ejected. That's why you can't play. What is temperament for all of you who love the fruit of the Spirit? Self-control. You better control yourself and sit down in the right church. Self-control ain't just not rubbernecking other women. Self-control is, Lord, I know the plan of God for my life, and I'll receive whatever correction you're doing. Now, what you said, Melvin, you said if you get corrected, don't start moving to the back. Get somewhere and sit down and receive your lashings and let the Lord build you back up again. Let the Lord do a thing in you. Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit in me. You better get some self-control and stop listening to the wrong people that's trying to steer you the wrong way. So why weren't they counted worthy? To be invited to the table? But then your invitation is redacted? He said, I'll tell you what, they're not worthy. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to go to the highways. I'm going to show you why they weren't worthy. Stay with me. Go to the main highways and lead out of the city and invite to the wedding feast as many as you find. Those servants went out in the streets and gathered together all the people they could find. What kind of folk, y'all? Bad and good. You know what I love about Christianity? Everybody gets a chance. Both bad and good. Come on, folk with a dark, dark past and folk with no past at all. Now, if you like me in here and you've been bad, you all be shouting off of that point right there. I'm so glad that God still gives bad people a chance. I said, I'm so glad that God still gives bad people who used to be bad. He still gives us a chance. He said, go go gather the people both what? Good and bad, so that the wedding hall would be filled with dinner guests sitting at the banquet table. But what made them unworthy? But when the king came to see the dinner guests, he saw a man there who was not dressed appropriately in wedding clothes. He saw a man who was too common with the things of God. He saw a man that was too familiar with his church attendance. He saw a man that was too wrapped up in the religion of Christianity instead of the relationship of Christianity. He saw a man that was fundamentalist that didn't believe in the Holy Ghost that wanted a part of God but not all of God. And who are you to leave God out? He saw a Christian that said, I got born again, but I don't plan on doing anything other than this. I'll be some dried up deacon in some church all my life for 30 years and do my little bit, never evangelize anybody, never get anybody saved, never do anything significant, and I'm going to leave well enough alone and I'll be just fine. Familiarity was not dressed appropriately. Are y'all getting that? Didn't honor it. So many people, they don't honor, they don't honor, and I'm preaching honor, y'all. They, they don't honor the access. You better start honoring access. I'm going to tell you something here at KCC. It's going to sound arrogant, but it's not. It's confident. You better honor the preacher you got. You better honor the word you get in the week in and week out. I, I, I'm not batting my eye. I don't feel no conflict of interest. I said, you better start honoring this. You better start saying to yourself, man, I need that. Because the day going to come where preachers like this going to be out. Y'all, the rapture about to occur. And let me give y'all some instruction. Those of you who are going to be left behind, go to the bookstore and get all my tapes on how to withstand in trouble because it's going to get real dark. Come on, take your seat. No, go back on YouTube and listen to how to stand strong because it's going to get real hard, baby. You ain't seen hard yet. You think COVID was something? A walk in the park to the tribulation. 
I said, a walk in the park to the real tribulation. So you better start honoring where you are. You better start honoring the system you're in. If you go to this ministry and you are an official member, those of you who are visiting, you can close your ears on this. This is housekeeping. But you're a member and you have never had a discipleship meeting in your six, five year existence at this ministry. You're not dressed. You're not ready. You're not becoming. I listened to the great Robin Gould say something that just stroke a chord in me. He said, I am just striving to make it in. You striving? Wow. That's true. You mean a man that's been doing it for 40 years? He's striving? Well, Lord, if he's striving, God, I need to sprint. I, I got I to work a little harder. You mean the man that built all the Christian schools is striving? In the Christian colleges? No, I, I think I need to do a little bit more than striving. What is he saying? I'm taking seriously my soul salvation. Y'all, I'm a preacher, and I'm not playing with my walk. How many jokes have you heard me tell today? None, because ain't nothing funny. Jesus is coming back, buddy. We getting out of here, and you better get dressed. Many are called, but few are chosen. Who are the ones that were called but not chosen? The ones who were not dressed. What makes you get dressed? Your purpose, your pursuits, and the plan of God. That's the revelation. You are dressed when you are activating the purpose and plans and pursuits of God for your life. I'm going to have to preach this out a few more Sundays. You are dressed when you are functioning in what God called you. Don't be thinking, come on, Matthew 25, God going to come back and say, oh, it's okay, you didn't do anything for the kingdom. Come on. That's not even biblical, y'all. The Bible says, well done. Well done. No, slow it down. Well done means I did something. I can't be well done if I hadn't done. You can't get a merit bonus if you have no merit. You didn't do nothing this quarter. So how are we going to give you a merit bonus? No, we give merit bonuses because you brought in this much more sales or this many more contracts or more customers. That is a earned merit bonus. But when you've not done anything worth a hill of beans, we cannot say, well done. We can give you a mercy bonus, but the mercy bonus is that Jesus died for you while you were yet sinners. I didn't earn salvation. Somebody say, that's enough mercy. Now I got to do something got to do something. Boy, this is some good teaching today. They weren't appropriately dressed. Y'all still with me? And listen to what he says in verse number 12. Just three more. And he said, friend, how did you come in here <laughs> without wearing the right clothes? And I like Amplify. That were provided for you. I gave you the discipleship model to work with. I gave you Rhonda, I gave you Sekou, I gave you Pam, I gave you Melvin. I gave you all the people to walk through with. I gave you Pastor Gabe, but you hadn't done anything. I gave you a life group on how to get out of pornography, but you didn't sign up. I gave you a marriage, uh, uh, a marriage retreat, but your marriage didn't need it. I said your marriage didn't need it. Didn't have a babysitter. Did you believe for one? My wife and I had somewhere to go, and we got four kids strong. No babysitter in sight. Parents couldn't do it. Sweet mother-in-law, schedule, she works, all that kind of good stuff. You know what we started doing? We believed for it. You know what God did? He gave us the exact, perfect, pure person. Can you believe for a car? Can you believe for a job? Can you believe for a babysitter? Has to lighten up some. Now I'm trying to get you dressed. I said, Are you dressed? Over here in our Western culture, we got manzy pansy battles to fight while our dear brothers over in communistic societies are getting their heads chopped off and getting pulled apart by cars and watching their wives get raped right before their eyes. And we got men, and then they get on screen and they thank God for the opportunity to be counted worthy. Worthy of the tribulation. Wow. 
My husband is in heaven. I saw the videotape when the woman's husband got his head chopped off by ISIS. She said, my husband is in heaven, but I thank God. I'm just, I'm, oh, I thank God for all that he is doing for me right now. No warm body to sleep next to, but she was counted worthy to be on the team. But Thursday night Bible study hits you in the back every week. You're not dressed. My job, Pastor, I can't get off my job. Are you believing for a job? Where you can go to Bible study. I said, do you believe for it? Do you believe? Do you believe for it? Good God Almighty. How, how did they come to the wedding without wearing the right clothes? And the man was, and this was some of you going to be, I don't want to prophesy it over you, but I'm telling you, it's scripture, so I can't override it. But Lord, if y'all don't start getting dressed and start adhering to the things of God and stop putting your stuff ahead of God, Matthew 6, seek ye first. Everybody say first things first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be Added, the Bible says the man was what? Speechless without excuse. And that is a dangerous place to be in in front of God. They call that the great white throne judgment. I want to stand before the beamer. I want to hear him say, well done. Well done, thy what kind of servant? Good and faithful. That means you did something, but you kept and notice how, how the master responds. And I won't have time to finish this today. We'll go to a part two. Is that all right? He said, how do you come in not dressed right? The king said to his ascendants, tie him hand and foot. Throw it, y'all, is this in the scripture? Throw him the outer darkness outside. In that place, there will be weeping over sorrow and pain and grinding of teeth over distress and anger. Here's the revelation. Now, because of this activity, understand, many are called, invited, and summoned, but few are chosen. God's looking for a few good men. Will you be one of the few? That's enough. I had points and everything. No, let's stop with God. God's done, I'm done. That's enough. I said, that's enough. He don't need points today. Will you be the chosen? And I'm telling you, you can shout, you can hop up on your seat, and I say something that invigorates you, but I'm telling you, until you implement, until you leave here and go and do what God said to do, you are at danger of not being dressed. Can you walk through a whole mall without evangelizing one person? If you're capable of that, you're probably not dressed. The very last mandate Jesus gave us was Matthew 28. He said, you go and make disciples. Well, pastor, I'm in a city where my church, we were in Virginia Beach not long ago. The Spirit of God had me minister to our waitress. I don't pastor in Virginia Beach. But one man planted, another water, but God gives the increase. Everybody I minister to won't become one of my members, but they'll become a member of the heavenly band. I'm going to meet some people in the rapture that I'll see again that I shared the gospel with in New Orleans. I was in New Orleans last week. Folk that I shared the gospel with down there, I'm going to meet them in the rapture. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Are you doing what God said to you? Y'all, when I tell you that's what we call Holy Spirit preaching, teaching, I didn't get to half of my content. But ministers in training, sometimes your content is not God's content. God is knocking at the door of somebody's heart today. As we all stand, if you're in here and you know without a shadow of a doubt, <clears throat> first things first, guys, you can play softly, please. First things first, I need to receive Jesus as my Lord. I need to know him in my heart. In fact, I, I feel like Pastor gave I backslidden. Good to see you. I, I've gone back in some places and spaces, but I want to know him in my heart. If that's you, I want to invite you down to know him, know him, know him. Now, 
as soon as I said the word backslidden, it triggered in my spirit. So God wants me to harp on that, but in a different kind of way. You may be born again, and probably you are. After all, that's what backsliding kind of means, to be born again, but to just go back, right? But y'all, can I give you another added definition to backsliding? Backsliding is also coming out of the game when God didn't tell you to. I stopped saying, outside of natural physical tiredness, I stopped saying long ago that I'm tired of doing what I'm doing. In fact, I don't ever remember saying that. If you hear my altar calls, I'm always saying, ain't no quitting in me. It's the only thing coming out of my mouth, church. I'm telling you, I really mean that. Because when you take yourself out of the game, backslide, not fulfilling the plans and purposes for your life, you're not pleasing God. And you're at danger for not being dressed. I want to make a very sincere plea for somebody in this room that you know you have backslidden out of the purposes, plans, and pursuits of God for your life. If that's you, that's the first group I want to call to the altar. I want to pray for you. I know I'm not in the purpose and plans for my life. I want to pray for you this morning. I know that's the case. I know that's the case. I'm nowhere near it. Amen. Because I don't want to miss God. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't want to almost be there. All right. I don't. And I love you this morning. And there are more in this room. Amen. But God wants you in the purposes and plans for your life. All right. Now, by answering this altar call, you're making a commitment that you will work God's systems. I, I might preach more of that in the next service. I like that concept of systems. I'm going to work God's systems, Claire. I'm going to do. I'm going to do. I'm going to do. I'm going to do. Now, there's one or two of you down here at this altar. I'm just going to tell you, you are in the purpose and plans of your life. I like your humility. All right? You're, you're what we call developing. Nothing wrong with development. All right? Come on, a little closer, guys. Nothing wrong with development. Development is right. All right? The first day I got born again, I didn't start preaching. I needed to develop. All right? All right? And I finally got the Holy Ghost. I didn't start doing it. I needed to do what? Develop. Develop. I wasn't ready to pastor a church yet. All right? Okay? But I'm talking about people who are just blatant. You know. And some of that has been attitudes and dispositions that moved you out. Do you all understand the whole concept of Matthew 22? Vicki, the reason why those people missed it was sincerely because of the wrong attitude. The wrong disposition towards God. Do you understand this is the equivalent of being invited to God's house and not having enough dignity to dress appropriately? That's bad. The first thing Joseph did, I think it's in Genesis 41, memory served me right, maybe around 14 or something. I don't know. But first thing he did when Pharaoh called him up, the Bible says he went and shaved and got dressed. Because he honored Pharaoh. I'm not just in front of any old body. I am in front of the ruler of the land. Everything that gets done must go through this person. It is crucial that this person likes me. And I'm going to tell you something. Those of you who are, and this has nothing to do with a political party, it's a mindset. Those of you who are democratic in your ideologies and mindset and believe that everybody is equal and everybody has the same access, you better get over that. No, you're going to have to honor some people. I didn't say that people were better than you. All right? People do have equal access, quote, unquote. It's not always equality. It's, it's rather not as fair. And there are some people, is it justice? Is it right? No, there's some people you don't have to slap down honor. You need to laugh at their jokes. They're your boss. Can you find a way to laugh? Boss tell you a joke and I got better ones than that. <laughs> can you at least humor? Humor me? Can, can you be honorable? Y'all, this is powerful. And that's why some people... Don't get invited to the party. I'm going to preach in the next service. I clear I am. But you better start learning how to help people like you. <laughs> I mean, the right people, not the wrong ones. But help them like you. Become likable. Right? Is that all right? Because you want to be in the purpose, plans, and pursuits 
of God for your life. I'm so glad you've been promoted in corporate America. I hope you go to the highest cliff. I got people that work in probably every bank in this city at this church. Some of you work for the city. Some of you work for the, the county. I don't know. All these precious people. I hope you rise to the top. But I'm telling you, if you rise to the top in your secular role, but in the kingdom of God, you shrink to the bottom and are of no fruit, God is not going to smile kindly at that. And you can call me over much. You might be streaming in. You can say, ah, he's too rigorous. You can call me legalism. <laughs> and I will tell you something that's hilarious. The people who call you judgmental, guess what they are? In order to call me judgmental, you got to judge. Isn't that crazy? Now you accusing me of the very thing that you're doing. Aren't they a little judgmental when they said that God made man and, man and woman? Aren't you judgmental? When you accuse us of saying it, after all, we didn't say it. Genesis 5 said it, that he made male and female, right? So you got to get delivered from that. Because guess what? You're going to be, y'all, nothing stays the same. I'm getting ready to pray. Close this building up all summer long. Don't turn the air on and let it ventilate. Shut it down. Just shut everything down. Let all that moisture build up. Don't have service until October. Come in here and you will be ripe for some mold. In the walls, all of that, it would just be germinating over a three-month period. Try it. I'll never forget having a rental property and it just shut up years ago. Going in that house after it had been shut up like that, oh, God, the dust just... Everything just built. You just need a mass cleaning in here. Right? Nothing stays the same. Your marriage will not stay healthy if you don't keep it healthy. Are you dating your wife? Nothing. Oh, no, I date my wife. I honor First Lady Roger. I just, the other day, just bought her two dresses for nothing. You know why? Honor. The Bible tells you to do that. First Peter chapter 3, it says, bestow upon her honor. Husbands, are you honoring your wives? Are you doing stuff for nothing? Are you sowing seeds? Wives, are you honoring your husband? Are you domestic? Do you fix her, his plate for no reason? Because you like doing it? Do you say, no, sweetie, you stay here. Let me get it. Y'all, I got too much. I got to stop. I, got, I can't wait to preach again at 10. I, I don't feel, I, I'm almost going to tell you, meet me at 4. I got too much revelation today. I'm telling you, we may not have men's fellowship. I don't know. I, I got to get this out. Because, y'all, Jesus will probably be back this week. We won't be here next Sunday. So any other messages that I got, I need to go ahead and get out. And you better stop being behind schedule. Now, I'm about to pray, but let me show you the mercies of God. I'm assuming that everybody who is not at the altar is officially in the plans and purposes of God for your life. All right? I'm assuming that right before I pray. If you are then you're in the right place, okay? If you're not, I'm going to give you one more minute to come on down to the altar and be prayed for. Because at a certain point, y'all, it's okay to acknowledge. Don't be afraid. We love you. I'm not mad at you, as a matter of fact. Come on down. Yep. You, some of you are. There's some people in this room, you ain't the purpose and plans for your life. I, th this altar call is not for you. I'm talking about some people, you're going to go ahead and be honest today. And no, I'm not, I'm not doing now what God told me to do, though. Can I give you the metaphor? And this is not arrogant. I'm going to say it, though, because this is played out right before you. Imagine if instead of coming to church to pastor and preach, this morning I just stayed in the bed, ate French toast and eggs and pancakes or whatever, bacon, and just disregarded where God told me to be. I'm not talking about vacation. On vacation, that's fine. I'm talking about you just haphazardly did not get up and go preach that gospel to those people I sent you to. Do you think God would be up in heaven smiling right now? You think, he, oh, that's fine. He just needed a break. You know why he wouldn't be okay with that? Because before this day was ever formulated, Rocky, God saw this altar call. Oh, Jesus. Before, before this day ever came in the natural, he knew these precious people would be here. And he put an assignment 
on yours truly life to be in place to deliver what he wanted to deliver. Yo, so I'm telling you that not because I'm tooting my own horn. You are no exception to that rule. You cannot lay out of the kingdom of God while God wants you to minister, become a missions person. Some of y'all may have worldwide missions on you. God may have planned for you to be in Africa next week, wanting you to be being developed in discipleship, but because you're behind schedule, guess where you're not going to be next week? Africa. And we love to say, God will get a replacement. You don't know your Bible. Ezekiel said, I looked for a man, but I could not find none. That's why when there's a fallen pastor in a city, it's such a great impact. And we've seen that in Charlotte. It causes sheep to scatter. Jeremiah 23 says, woe to the, to the shepherds that shatter the sheep. Some of you at this ministry, guess what you were? Scattered sheep. Some shepherd that didn't shepherd right didn't do what they were supposed to do, got caught up in immorality or did something that they weren't supposed to, and jacked stuff up. Now, somebody who was going to love Jesus for the next 10 years of their life, they are back at a club. They're back in some God-forsaken relationship. I'm ministering if you stay with me. They're somewhere where they would not have been because of the splash. When the devil gets a victory, it's an impact. It jars things, throws things off. So are you maintaining? I'm telling you, I'm ministering under the anointing. Are you maintaining? Are you becoming who God? You are no exception. Yes, I put the burden on your heart that you must carry out the plan of God. Now, don't get anxious. Development is fine. I want to say this because I don't want anybody leaving here all jacked up and messed up. I want you to leave here thinking. But if you're developing, can you call your discipleship partner next week, though? <laughs> Can you send them a text today and say, hey, I'm ready to develop. I want to develop. I'm no longer being behind schedule. I'm going to develop. I'm saying it with much care. I'm going to become what God called me to become. The Lord ministered to me many, many years ago. Uh, and it, I don't want anybody to, to get all jacked up on this either. But you got to hear this. Is this going to help you? You know, no, keep, keep, keep your body well. Keep Stay in shape. You need energy for where I'm taking you. That's a part of the qualification. All right? Keep your mind right. Are y'all getting this? Don't ever fall in love with money. He gave me some criteria that I must adhere to because that's what keeps me right. Too busy. Got too much going on. You think the devil would love to give somebody a brain aneurysm or a stroke or knock you off out of something? Is anybody getting this? I've seen so many preachers, you know what they say the average lifespan of a pastor is? 55. I've seen so many go before their time. Just didn't take care of themselves. They didn't do what they were supposed to do. They did great in their time. But they were supposed to be here 30 more years. Easy. Are y'all getting that? You got to fulfill. I got to pray and stop the plans and purposes for your life. Come on, lift your hand. God loves you. Let's repent first. Father, we're sorry. We're sorry for any unfulfillment of the plan of God for our, for our life, you are fulfilling the plan for your life. You are fulfilling the plan for your life. God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for just missing it, but God, I am going to fulfill this plan. So right now, in the name of Jesus, I repent for just not getting into the pursuit, in the doing, in the implementation of what you called me to do. No more of that, God. I'm going to develop and I'm going to become who you called me to develop and become. In the name of Jesus. Now we decree our deliverance and freedom from vices of the mind. Freedom from strongholds that try to hamper and hinder us from becoming who God called us to be. Come on, say it out loud. Satan, Satan take, your take your hands off of my mind. Of my mind. In, Jesus In Jesus' name, I will become, I will become who, God who God has called me, has called me to be. In Jesus, name. In Jesus' name. So, Father, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. Come on, begin to thank him for the victory right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm becoming. I'm becoming. I'm becoming. In Jesus' name. Who you called me to be. In the name of Jesus. Come on, let him love you back now. Come on, he won't be mad at you. He loves you. Let him love you back. Let him love you back. Hallelujah. God loves you. God has a plan for your life. God has a strategy for your life. Come on, come on. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I'm becoming, I'm becoming who you called me to be. Thank you, Lord. Now, don't leave the altar discouraged. Y'all getting that? Don't leave discouraged. <laughs> I was reminding God of something this week that's going to bless you that I had repented for. I said, God, I want to say I'm sorry again for that. And a check came up in my spirit. And the check was, why are you talking about that again? Didn't you already tell me? <laughs> right? You know how God feels about this? Let's not discuss it anymore. Let's just go ahead and do what we said we would do. Is that all right? Let, let's stop talking about it and let's start talking about what we're going to do. Anybody believe in that? If you know you got another chance to pursue, will you give them one more wave of glory in this room? Come on, hallelujah. Father, we thank you right now. I'm going to become who you called me to be. In Jesus' name. You may return to your seat. We're going to do our morning offering. If you're here and you don't have a church home but you want one, we'll be glad to take you in today. That may be the first step of you getting in your system. You got something, dear? Yeah, come on. Yeah, you got, you, you, you're here and you, got, you want to be a member, you can come. First lady has something. Dear, get that microphone. Amen. I could tell the Lord was saying something to you. All right, y'all stay in the spirit. Don't fall out of it. Stay in the spirit. Come on, dear. Share what the Lord is telling you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You guys got the mic on, Sean? Mm hmm Make sure it's on for you up here. It's so good, y'all. Stay, stay with us. All right, just this microphone right here. There we go. All right, yes, ma'am. This is actually a reiteration, um, Pastor, that the Lord placed on my heart on Thursday night and just mm. um, placed on my heart to reiterate it at the end of Bible study on Thursday night at the altar Mm -hmm. The Lord gave me a specific word, and I specifically said for the members mm -mm -mm. of the church, and you can actually go back and, and listen to it, to, the way to avoid that passivity, that passive mindset is to go all in on the, 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 the discipleship model wow. that, that, that God has established in this church. And the Lord placed it upon my heart to reiterate that, as you have already said, Again, to the members especially of our church, as I said on Thursday night, the, the, the way to, to avoid, uh, the way to be dressed mm -mm -mm. is to go all in into the discipleship model that God has given our pastor for this church. Don't resist the DP model. Get rid of the spirit of offense, etc. but to go all in on that. Wow. There that. Thank you for that. So good. Y'all, I'm telling you, and, and, and you all know, I, I wasn't here last week. I was at a conference. I didn't hear her message. I didn't, definitely didn't hear that part. Um, and so it's confirmation. Y'all, please go all in. Let me tell you how to do it. Go ahead and book, book, book your DPs. Book them and book them some more, okay? Get on their schedule and go in there with a list of things. And at the top of the list, call it, I'm telling on myself. Y'all got that? I'm going to expose myself. Every wrong thought, ideology, mentality. I just want to confess this before somebody so that I can be made right. Is that right, Mel? We tell on ourselves, and I promise you, that's how you get a clean heart. Amen. The heart is that will, that emotions, that intellect, the soul. You go in there, and you just lay it out there. Pastor, you really mean that? Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I got to be honest. It, it bothered me when they did thus and so, or this happened in my life, or that happened. You just tell on yourself, and before you know it, you're free, and not only free, but free how? Indeed. That's enough for today. Thank you, dear. A great word. Somebody give God a hand clap. It's offering time. Amen. All right. So good to have visitors here this morning. We love you. I don't want to put anybody on the spot, but I see one of my wife's um, Nordstrom friends <laughs> in the house uh, here today and won't, won't say too much because I don't know who wants to be recognized or who doesn't. Okay. Yeah, she want to have a word. Yeah, all right. Okay. Well, if you're going to have a word, girl, come on up here. While y'all get your offering ready, she, she got something she want to say. This, this is Lauren. All right. Lauren, you got something the Lord bless you with? Guys, get your offerings ready. Go ahead and put it on the screen. We give you, Lauren, go ahead. Take 60 seconds. What you got to say? Uh, I just want to.
wanted to introduce myself. Good morning. My name is Good Lauren. Morning. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting um, the Rogers family uh, at Nordstrom. Mm. That's where I work. So they just were kind enough to invite me um, here. So decided to come, of course. And I appreciate you guys. Um, and I really enjoyed the service. Thank you. Lauren, you're awesome, girl. Good to have you. Amen. And you got to meet y'all. Y'all know shit. Can I tell the part about what you're going to be? Or you want me to hold that? Oh. I could hold it. You sure? Because I don't like to breach confidentiality now. Yeah, that's okay. Well, it's I'm, all right. kind of, I'm working on trying to manifestation. You speaking into manifestation? Well, you tell them. Uh, well, um, so. What you going to be? Well, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm trying to, well. Don't I, try. I, do I, it. I'm, okay, you're right. See, mm -hmm. you're right. See, you're right. Well, I just took the LSAT um, to go to law school. Um, Amen. 